Sub-zero wind chills expected out there tonight and tomorrow. It might feel like single digits all day long. The Arctic air mass is here. It's a very active week, too. I'll track all of it coming up for you. We're trying to get everybody we can tonight in because it's going to be below zero. The compassionate caravan is out late tonight, making sure they get everyone inside away from the cold. I did what any father would do, you know. So I'm no hero, I'm a dad. We'll show you how the community honored a Versailles family after the death of their six year old son. WKYT News starts now with first alert weather. Arctic air has moved in. Thanks for staying up with WKYT. I'm Kristen Kennedy. We are seeing some snow in parts of the region and temperatures are starting to drop. That is why tonight is a first alert severe weather day here at WKYT. And that is why we begin with meteorologist Jim Caldwell. And we are tracking that Arctic air already in place. This is just the first part of it, though. It's going to get even worse as we progress through the overnight hours because here in Lexington, we're already down to 13 degrees. And you look to eastern Kentucky, they're still holding on to the 20s. So it's coming, and it's coming for you folks out there to the east as well. Nine degrees already in Covington, so it's starting to take over a little bit more each moment. The wind chill readings right now are already tough. I mean, you walk outside, it's like someone kicks you right in the face. One below zero. That's what it feels like in Lexington. Feels like zero in Frankfurt, and then Covington continues to win the cold awards here tonight. They piled another one on with a wind chill of nine below zero. Overnight, I think the actual air temperatures end up right around what you see. You're looking at five, six, seven degrees uh, throughout most of central Kentucky. Throw in the winds, and it's going to make it feel a whole lot worse. Don't forget, we also have some snow out there tonight. It's mainly in eastern parts of Kentucky, but getting all kinds of reports of some slick road conditions and a good coating to maybe even up to an inch in some of those higher elevated spots, as they always seem to get a little bit more in some of those. So tracking that as well. And this isn't the only snowmaker of the week. We've got another that has the potential to bring a few inches of snow. We will track it. And, of course, this Arctic air coming up. A group of volunteers in Lexington is braving the cold tonight to make sure others outside stay warm. The Compassionate Caravan is driving around downtown Lexington looking for people in need of clothes and shelter. WKYT's Caitlin Sentner tagged along. She has our top story at 11. What's up, buddy? No, you didn't say it like Praise you the to. Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Old man Winter stayed away for quite some time, but he's here tonight. A jacket and gloves just won't cut it. But I'll be there with you, and I can bring you back in the morning. You know how cold it's going to get tonight? I'm going to have this van all night and in the morning, all right? We're trying to get everybody we can tonight in because it's going to be below zero. You just think about it, all right? It's the coldest night of the year so far, and the wind chill makes it almost unbearable. The goal is just to get everyone inside tonight. How we doing? Praise the Lord, buddy. Oh, I'll be working on it. All right. I don't know if you've ever had frostbite or something, but your fingers go numb. You can't feel them. So, you know, their whole body's going to do that, and they won't even know. But not everyone wants the help. Sometimes we're told they like being out on their own, no rules, but sometimes it's fear of losing what they do have. The camp is like their home. It may take them a year to find a good place and to build a place, and they have to pack it all there by hand. So if they're not there every night, somebody come in and tear their stuff up or take something. But until they let us, you know, we're just reaching. So we just got to keep reaching, do the best we can. This is wrapped up tighter, so it'll be, yeah, thank you, man. All right, we'll be back to pick y'all up. Reaching out is what they'll continue to do all winter long. Thank you, bud. All right, I'll see you guys in the morning. Let them know we'll be giving a ride in the morning, all right? These people are wanting to help, so they're the best because, you know, they are coming with a heart. They ain't coming. They don't know nothing about nobody. They just know there's a need. In Lexington, Caitlin Setner, WKYT. The Compassionate Caravan will be out driving around through the early morning hours. In Clark County, one shelter is feeling the effects of the cold weather tonight. 
The Beacon of Hope shelter in Winchester says they won't turn anyone away, but they are feeling a strain on the resources right now. Shelter leaders need help providing three hot meals a day for each of their guests. It's about $25 a day for each resident with food, heat, everything that's factored in. The shelter on Talbot Avenue in Winchester will accept donations at any time of day. Stay ahead of the winter weather and traffic with the WKYT Weather Plus Traffic app. You can download it for free in the app or Google Play stores. The Versailles community is continuing to support a family after the death of their six-year-old boy. Logan Tipton died during a violent break-in at his home last month. Today, the mayor of Versailles and the American Legion honored the Tipton family. WKYT's Hillary Thornton attended the ceremony. Inside of American Legion Post 67. And just like any other family that lost a little soldier. A family that is going through the unthinkable. They've inspired us all. Their faith and strength as a family. An American flag given to the grieving parents of six-year-old Logan Tipton. You guys stood up to it. You guys have been through it. Meanwhile, commemorative coins given to each of Logan's siblings, ages 11, 9, 7, and 4, all in the home when their young brother was killed. They are the true little warriors, and they, I believe, as a parent, they deserve every bit of every recognition they got. They acted and reacted without thinking, basically put their lives on the line to save each other. I did what any father would do, you know, so I'm no hero, I'm a daddy. I can't imagine what they went through that night. What I went through was horrible, but what my children went through is, is pure evil. Recognition certainly earned honoring the bravery of the family while remembering one of their little soldiers who is no longer with them, a six-year-old boy who they say knew nothing but love with a bright future ahead. You know, Logan could have been anything. He could have been anything he wanted to be. But somebody come into my home and took my son away from me without him being able to live his life. And now he'll live on forever. Logan's light will shine on forever. A life bringing the community together to rally behind his family. Feels like everybody's wrapped their arms around us and lifted us up when we feel like we're going to fall. In Woodford County. No, oh, he's smiling right now, I know. <laughs> That's just it. He's, he's got a smile from ear to ear right now. Hillary Thornton, WKYT. And the Tiptons say their children are holding up well. They are trying to maintain a sense of normalcy for them, staying busy with school and activities. A Laurel County man is facing charges tonight after police say he poured lighter fluid on a child's hand and set it on fire. London police charged 27 year old James Stark with assault and wanton endangerment. Police say Stark told them he and the eight-year-old were playing a lighter game and the child got hurt. Officers say neither Stark nor the child's mother took him to the hospital. School administrators saw the wound and contacted police. It's definitely a second degree burn. It's not a first degree. It's not just redness of the skin. It's removal of the skin. Who plays a game by catching somebody on fire? The child is expected to make a full recovery. He is now living with his grandfather. Police say Stark may face additional charges. A Lexington man is in jail tonight accused of rape. According to an arrest citation, a woman told Lexington police 27-year-old Joseph Hopper raped her and refused to let her leave. The woman eventually got away, but police say Hopper followed her in a car until a passerby picked her up. Hopper faces a first-degree rape charge. Deputies in Whitley County are looking for two men they think committed a string of burglaries. Investigators say they broke into several cars at three churches this morning between 10 and noon. Deputies are also investigating a theft case at Goldberg Baptist Church where they say someone stole two purses and two cell phones. State police are looking into a similar case at Freewell Baptist Church and a church in Williamsburg. Deputies also think the thefts could be connected to a recent case in Laurel County. One part of you wants to get angry, but the, I guess the other part uh, wants to have a forgiving heart. And I guess we'll just pray for them, and justice will come for them somewhere. State police are looking into a similar case at Freewell Baptist Church. Williamsburg police are also investigating a case at a church within city limits. Deputies released photos of two men in a navy blue Chrysler town and country parking at least two damaged cars. 
Police in Johnson County have arrested a man accused of breaking into homes and using his dog as his lookout. Deputies got a call last night about a burglary in the West Van Leer community. When they arrived, they found a pit bull outside of a home. Deputies caught 60 year old Kenneth Meek inside the home. They say he admitted to breaking into another house Saturday. If you run into a situation like this, it can get, uh, it can go south in a hurry. Lucky for us, this guy was unarmed other than his vicious dog. The sheriff says his deputies returned all stolen items to their owners. Meek is charged with burglary, criminal mischief, and public intoxication. Just a block from the Charleston church where a gunman killed nine people in June, the Democratic presidential candidates clashed on gun control and other issues in the last debate before the Iowa caucuses. Wei Zha Zhang has the story from Charleston. Under fire from Hillary Clinton for changing his position on immunity of gun manufacturers, Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders shot back at his opponent. I think Secretary Clinton knows that what she says is very disingenuous. Sanders said he has a D minus report card from the NRA, but Clinton says he's voted numerous times with the gun lobby. He voted to let guns go onto Amtrak, guns go into national parks. He voted against doing research to figure out how we can save lives. Former Maryland Governor Martin O'Malley accused both Clinton and Sanders of being inconsistent when it came to gun control. I'm the one candidate on this stage that actually brought people together to pass comprehensive gun safety legislation. The candidates fiercely debated who do the best job reigning in Wall Street. You've received over $600,000 in speaking fees from Goldman Sachs in one year. You do not go as far as reigning in Wall Street as I would. I have a plan that most commentators have said is tougher, more effective, and more comprehensive. Sanders is leading in the New Hampshire polls, and he's tied with Clinton in Iowa. But a new poll gives Clinton a big edge over the Vermont senator nationwide. When this campaign began, she was 50 points ahead of me. We were all of three percentage points. All three candidates are looking for a spark before the Iowa caucuses on February 1st. Weijia Jang, CBS News, Charleston. The Democrats won't meet again until February 11th. The Republicans will debate again January 28th. Meanwhile, overseas, several Americans are missing in Iraq. The company, the three work for, filed a report today saying they went missing two days ago. Media reports there say a group of gunmen took them from an apartment in Baghdad and left in a convoy of cars. Leaders suspect local militia and not a larger group like ISIS. A Floyd County man is in the hospital tonight after police say his ex-girlfriend's new boyfriend shot him. The shooting happened on Old Country Road in Herald around 7 last night. State police say a woman told them her boyfriend, Stan Lee, shot her ex, Eric Edmonds. Troopers say Edmonds drove to the woman's house to confront the couple, and when he refused to leave, Lee shot him. Emergency crews took Edmonds to Pikeville Medical Center with possible life-threatening injuries. So far, police haven't filed any charges. State police are investigating a deadly crash in Pike County. Troopers haven't released many details, but they do say 22-year-old Caleb Ramey from Georgetown died in the wreck. They are waiting on autopsy results from a medical examiner before they release any other information. The color of a Martin County Creek has people living near it worried. The Kentucky Division of Water says Revelation Energy reported a slurry spill in Wolf Creek. This isn't the first time black water has shown up in the creek. The Martin County Emergency Management Director says it happens too often. It's first thing for the whole county as a whole, especially the uh the people that live in that in that area, um, you know, you know, it'll happen a couple times a year. The emergency management director says drinking water is not affected.